Hi everyone, welcome to researchmd.com. My name is Pramil Charet. I'm a program director of internal medicine residency and transitional residency uh, in the United States. I'm also a director of research and assistant professor of medicine to a large medical school in the United States. We've been doing a series of lectures. Um, you know, last week we started our endocrinology series, and we gave it like a, initially we gave it like a brief introduction, like all these hormones, hypothalamus, anterior pituitary, and posterior pituitary. Now we're going to go deep inside. Okay, we're going to start each one. Today our goal is to look at the what? Posterior pituitary hormone. The what we start with? Oxytocin my friend. Okay. So our goal is to teach you everything about oxytocin. By the end of this lecture you will be an expert on oxytocin. Okay. Now what is oxytocin? It's a peptide hormone. We've got like nine amino acids. Remember. Okay. So where does it produce? In the hypothalamus and released into the posterior pituitary and only other thing you need to know the half lies around 12 to 13 or 13 to 15 minutes. That's why it kind of works very well in where pregnancy like labor induction. Right. Now let's look into the synthesis. The first thing we need to know the synthesis of oxytocin. When you talk about synthesis of oxytocin, now we have to go to our hypothalamus and the posterior pituitary, right? When you look at the, what happened, you got magnocellular neurosecretory cell bodies in the supraarctic and the paraventricular nuclei. Okay, now if you have to like most of the action is happening in where? Paraventricular nuclei. Okay, remember that. Okay, but also have like your, so your macrocellular neurosecretory cell bodies in the supraoptic and paraventricular nuclei. And initially, right, oxytocin is kind of, the precursor is a, a, a oxytocin plus neurophysin complex. That's where the initial form. Formed, okay, and then it's packaged in the ER and the Gorg ER and the Gorga, the Golgi bodies, secretory granule, and then it goes to the axonal terminal of the posterior pituitary, and then what happened? The final step, oxytocin is cleaved from this the oxytocin neurophysin complex, right? This one need to be gone, gone, and it's like we need to know there's an enzyme here, peptidylic glycine amidating monooxygenase. It helps in the cleaving the oxytocin from the precursor. So this one is gone, so mainly oxytocin, then it's gonna release into the blood. Okay? Everybody got that? So you got like again magnocellular neurosecretory cells in the paraventricular and supraoptic nuclei, right? You got a precursor first, you got this neurophysin complex kind of combined together, go to the axona, and then finally it's cleaved by the uh, peptidylic glycine enzyme and it's kind of released into the blood, okay? Now, once, now we have to look at how does it work, the mechanism of action. So when you talk about oxytocin, right, everybody know the role in labor, right? It kind of helps in the contractions. So we'll start and look at like, what is the mechanism of action in the labor of oxytocin, right? So what happened? What's the stimulus for the oxytocin in the labor? You got the cervical dilatation, that's what happens, right? Cervical dilatation here, signal goes and you kind of go, you got paraventricular supraoptic nuclei, right? And then you got oxytocin is produced right here and that oxytocin, and how does the oxytocin work? That's what we need to understand, okay? Oxytocin, you got only one receptor, first of all. Only one receptor. It's like a G protein couple receptor, okay? And then it activates the phospholipase C. Okay, and then what happened is like you got a couple of reactions happening over here. One, you got phosphatidyl triphosphate right here, PIP3. That's where that is convert, converted into ionosyl triphosphate. Okay, and then you have one more that it also produces one, two diisyl glycerol is produced. Okay, and then what happened? Then it, that goes to the endoplasmic reticulum, then the calcium release, and the next step is there's a calcium binding protein we need to know. What is that? Calcium, what is called calmodulin. Okay, this is the calcium binding protein. Now you have another for, another complex formation, calcium calmodulin complex, and that produces uh, myosin, light uh, myosin light chain kinase, okay? And this is where the final action take place. Okay, so what does it do? You get myometrial contraction and the baby is delivered. Okay, so let's summarize or let's go back again. Cervical dilatation, go to the supraoptic paraventricular nucleus. You got oxytocin. It's only one receptor, receptor we know. That is what. And then it activates or just combined with the phospholipase C right here. 
he got what? Phosphatidyl triphosphate is converted into inosyl triphosphate and also he got one to diacyl glycerol that kind of goes to the, I mean, to the endoplasmic reticulum, calcium release. And then where does it go to? There's a calmodulin, which is a calcium binding protein, my friends. And they form this important calcium calmodulin complex and that myosin light chain kinase, okay? And this is what all the action takes place. What happened to the myometrium? It start contracting and then deliver. The baby is delivered. Remember, that's very important. And what is the next thing? We talk about this. The next thing we have to know about the oxytocin is what? Milk let down reflex. Okay, so what happens? Now you have the baby already, right? Baby, what does the baby need? Milk. Okay, so suck on the nipple. What happened? The stimulation, that's the stimulant, right? And then uh, it goes to the paraventricular supraoptic nucleus, right? And then oxytocin release come up here. Again, you got the receptor, right? G, G protein couple receptor, my friends, okay? Now you got Phosphatidyl ionositol triphosphate here. That's converted into ionositol triphosphate. Okay, then you have what? 1, 2, diacyl glycerol. Endoplasmic reticulum. Calcium, calcium release. Calmodulin, calcium binding protein. And calcium calmodulin complex. And they got myosin light chain kinase. Okay, and that acts, that's a, that's a smooth muscle contraction. That's what we need to know. Okay, I forgot to tell you that earlier. And then it go back on act on the, uh, where? Myoepithelial cells, right? It act on the myoepithelial cells. And then the press is releasing milk. And the baby, what happened to the baby? Happy. Okay, <laughs> so you want to always be happy. I don't know how many, how many of you have kids over here. You don't want a crying baby. Okay, and remember that two two things we need to know, right? The role of oxytocin in labor and delivery. The role of oxytocin in the milk letdown reflex. Two theories you have to know in and out. Okay, very, very important posterior pituitary hormone. Now, let's look at the oxytocin. Like, what are the roles oxytocin play, right? So, what happened? We talked about at birth, this partial region, uterine contraction. Everybody know that. Milk letdown reflex. So you know, we went over very well. Now, what are the other thing? Oxytocin, that happens in the childhood. It also helps in the maternal behavior and proper parenting. Okay? Now, let's talk about adolescence, social interaction, social recognition, right? Or recognition. And then, in the adulthood, aggression, sexual behavior, and bonding. What else oxytocin is called? Also called love hormone. Okay? So, it's very important to know that. Now, we know all of this. Um, what is the, we need to know the oxytocin we use is a drug in delivery, okay? So there is a synthetic oxytocin also, remember that. Let's look at it, oxytocin synthetic, it's a synthetic peptide. You got the dose is 6 micro international units and remember the half-life is only what? 13 to 15 minutes, okay? And then uses, you can everybody know about the labor induction, the role in labor is very clear. You can also use in what? Postpartum hemorrhage, okay? And then what are the adverse effects? It can cause hypotension. What happened is like when, you know, initially it can may cause like the smooth muscle contraction, right? We talked about right here, but sustained use kind of relax, make it smooth muscle relaxation, Patient become hypotensive, so that's like number one complication. Number two, you got hyponatremia because it acts on the ADH receptors, okay? So that can cause hyponatremia and sustain contraction of the uterus. You don't want anything like everything too much is a problem, right? Too much contraction of the uterus is also very, very um, important. So just kind of, just let's review oxytocin one more time. So I'm going to stand back over here. So we talk about, you know, you got the peptide hormone, nine amino acids, right? And then we talk about macrocellular neurosecretory cell bodies in the para, I mean, paraventricular and supraoptic. So remember, main action is taken by para optic, I mean, paraventricular nuclei, right? And then you got oxytocin neurophysin complex is finally cleaved by peptidide glycine, amidating monooxygenase, and then kind of released into the blood. Okay, now let's look at the set. What happens over here? Main thing, there's two uses we need to know. First one, we start with the labor and delivery, right? You got what happens, the signal, the contraction, right? Or the uh, dilatation, actually. Dilatation of the cervix, not the contraction. Dilatation of the cervix goes to the paraventricular and subtractic nucleus. It's released, and then you look at the oxytocin. You got the G protein couple receptor and then phospholipase C activation, 
right? And then you got the phosphate deal inositol triphosphate is converted into inositol triphosphate, and then one two diacylglycerol or calcium release, calmodulin, calcium, calmodulin complex medium um, light chain kinase okay and then that cause smooth muscle contraction act on the uterus it can also i mean the other thing is like the when you know baby delivers after the after the baby delivers going to cry for what milk right now we have the another reflux need to be taken milk letdown reflux so baby suck on the uh, nipple you got the stimulus right here oxytocin produce same mechanism medium light chain kinase smooth muscle contraction and then go to the breast milk is released okay and then we just we still need to know like the um, other some of the other actions right here we got a nice circle diagram over here some of the other actions of oxytocin so so called love hormone remember and finally we need to know the oxytocin drug which is a synthetic peptide and uh, use labor in the PPH and then complication hypotension hyponatremia sustained contraction thank you very much everyone for joining us today Please subscribe to our channel because it takes a lot of person's effort and make a presentation like this and we greatly appreciate if you could help us. Thank you again.